Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 22 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Uh, so hey, today I want to get charcoal automated, courtesy of my storage controller and all this other stuff that we got going on today. So last episode we got a tree farm going with Crete. Uh, today I would like to use laser IO to automate the creation of charcoal. And frankly, this should be pretty easy with laser IO because there's a lot of features that make it pretty easy to access different sides of blocks. I think I can do it without any other nodes. I think literally just placing the furnace here will get me going. Should we try it? Or right, let's do it. So uh, what I want to do is I want to use stocking mode cards to keep in stock charcoal and wood. And I want to do it on specific sides. So stocking modes can pull from inserter item cards. So basically we're going to pull wood and charcoal out of the storage controller and then insert charcoal into it. Does that sound fair? So to do that, we're going to have um, one mode that's going to be in stock mode. And I would like to regulate about half a stack of, uh, of wood in there. Should be good. And uh, let me borrow this guy because we're going to have another card that's going to be in stock mode. And that guy is going to get 32. Cool. And you can transfer eight at a time. And you can transfer eight at a time. And we don't need much more than that. I, think, I don't think we need any upgrades or speed upgrades in these things. So uh, with that said, then finally we want to extract just, you know, whatever. So extract all the things. Um, and that literally should be it. So let's see, on the bottom, right, we need to insert wood into the top, right? So the wood card, we're gonna keep on sneaky mode default because we wanna insert into the top. However, the coal, we want to insert into one of the four sides, right? So I'm just gonna set it to north side, okay? And then finally, the extract can happen from the downside, okay? Because what that means, we'll extract out the bottom, we'll insert coal on the side, we'll insert wood on the top, and if I'm not mistaken, I've already fully automated charcoal. <laughs> Let's see what happens, right? So I'm gonna access the downside. You know what, I wanna be at the height where I can kind of watch this happening, right? So on the down, I'm just gonna stick these cards in here, and that looks pretty cool to me. And I'm gonna stick my charcoal back in, and the charcoal was extracted, as we can see. And now he's cooking up more charcoal. Now what should happen is we should extract the charcoal into the oak drawer here, and then immediately extract it back out into the furnace. So it happened so fast that we didn't even notice it, but rest assured it happened. Bada bing, bada boom, in and out. And look, it's keeping the 32 wood in stock for us. How great is that? And then let's give this guy a little bit of help. What we will eventually see is once we've accumulated 32 charcoal in here, and technically it doesn't even need to be 32 charcoal. Which one is this? Let's make it eight. Okay. Now it's gonna start accumulating charcoal over here. And that should be cool. How great is that, huh? Easy peasy automation, holy cow, that is neato. And now it should fill up with eight and we're good. Sweet. All right. Well, charcoal's automated. <laughs> What'd that take me, a minute? Oh, man. Well, that was what I had planned to do the whole episode. Now what do I do? I don't know. No, I'm kidding. I knew, I knew that that would be quick. But um, I do want to think about what we should do this episode, so give me a few minutes. I'll be right back. So a couple quick notes about my tree farm. Uh, number one, you might notice it's going a little bit slower. And number two, you might notice it's no longer uh, failing to connect over here occasionally. I suspect that those two things are related. What I did is I moved, uh, instead of having the vertical dude here, I put the vertical gearbox here. Uh, we've got the brake here. Uh, I never did quite hook up my, my, my thing to it, but you know, it's all good. And then I just rewired some stuff underground so that it would, you know, go back to working. Also, I added the saw there. So now it's cutting up all the trees, which is good. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to let you know. All right, so what I think I'd like to do this episode is make a windmill. 
because uh, windmills are awesome. So if I mathed this out correctly, I personally like to have two full stacks of white sails and then one more when I create my windmill. So let me talk to you guys about what the windmill is and why we're making one. So the, the water wheel is a nice, if not slightly sloppy and messy way to create rotational energy. And in Create, there's several ways to do it. Um, you know, there, there's one that runs off a furnace, as long as the furnace is cooking. There's one that runs off wind. There's one that runs off water. There's a handful of ways you can create rotational energy. The windmill is probably in just vanilla Create. And when I say vanilla Create, that means that there are Create mods out there that add other ways to create power and do things. But in just base Create, the best way, in my opinion, to create rotational energy is the windmill. It's the most powerful. It takes up a significant amount of space. Like I said, the other option would probably be um, the flywheel, uh, which goes onto a furnace and a furnace engine. Um, unless this is changed um, while their attached furnace is running. So as long as the furnace is running, it will create energy. Okay, um, It'll create rotational force uh, with a very large stress capacity, by the way. Like, really quite big. Um, it's pretty nice. Using a blast furnace will double the efficiency of the engine. How cool is that? <laughs> this is a nice thing to do. The only downside with that, like I said, is it only works when the engine's running. So you have to come up with a clever way to keep that engine running at all times. Whether, like, like clearly we have one here, but this will eventually stop running. And let, well, I did, you know, in fairness, I put a void upgrade on this, and I probably shouldn't have. You know, we could remove this void upgrade. Well, that was weird. But you get the point, right? In fairness, we can remove the void upgrade from charcoal. Uh, I guess if we didn't remove the void upgrade from charcoal, then this furnace would technically always be running, um, which is an option for generating rotation. Maybe we'll do that one day. Well, we'll figure it out. I don't know. Um, but for now, what I want to make is a windmill because windmills are cool. So that's what we're doing. So the windmill bearing uh, just needs a shaft and some kind of block and a turntable. Uh, so let's get that cooked up, shall we? So turntable... Uh, do I have any of this stuff left? Not really. Get me some more shafts. And get me some planks. And we're going to need something-ish andesite-y. I think it said we could use tough, didn't it? Yeah, we can. Sweet. Windmill bearing. So you can take a look at the windmill and see that there's a handful of ways to make it. Basically... Windmill bearings attached to the block in front of them, and then you place something that looks like a sail. It can be just wool, or it can be the sail blocks, which in my opinion are definitely the way to go. Because um, in total you're going to need, according to my calculations, technically you need 128 blocks. I personally like to go with, where's my calculator here? I do 132. Uh, so for that reason, I like to have sail blocks, because... You can either use 132 wool, or you can use 132 divided by 8 wool. <laughs> so, <laughs> it comes out to 17 wool, or 132 wool. And then the, the rest of the windmill bearing, or sail, is just is just sticks and andesite alloy. So 100% worth it, right? Alright, so let's get a windmill built, shall we? Uh, so this is pretty straightforward. It's actually surprisingly easy to build a windmill. Um, first off, it can either be built in a couple ways, right? You can either build it vertically, which would look like this, or you can build it horizontally, which is what I think more people traditionally think of windmills looking like. But you can absolutely build it this way. There's no reason you can't. I personally like building it the way I'm about to. Um, but, you know, you guys do you. It's totally, totally however you want to do it. Once again, the beauty of Create, there's 10 different ways to do things. None of them are particularly right or wrong. It's just, you know, you do it the way you want. And that's what I that's what I really like about Create. It just feels very Minecraft, right? Minecraft is all about, you know, you, you do you, right? You you make, you design, you come up with idea, right? You you play the way you want to play. Um, so I'm actually, I'm going to measure this out because I want to have a rough idea of what I'm doing. So let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... I want it to be, it's going to be 12 blocks away. So if I put it here, the windmill is going to touch the ground. So let's go up a little bit higher, right? I'm going to double that. 
That's what I've decided I'm going to do. Okay, now I think I can wrench you. There you go. Sweet. Okay. Uh, you can change the rotational direction of the windmill. Not a problem. And uh, it's always easier if you have flight when you do this, but I don't have flight, so it is what it is. Now, here's the deal. Number one, placing a block in front of it and right-clicking the bearing. Uh, unable to extend it. Attached structure does not include enough sail-like blocks. Zero current, a minimum of eight are required. So you need to put at least eight sail-like blocks on your windmill. And from this point, you can kind of do it however you want. Um, what I will do... Clearly, I need to take another nap, but that's okay. We can sleep on top of our windmill because I have a sleeping bag. <laughs> In before I fall. Uh, oh, good. I didn't fall. All right, cool. So what I'm going to do is place my sail-like block this way. And I'm pretty sure if you like look like this, you'll see that it's going to let you add on to it like so. And do that okay so now i've got nine sail like blocks there and it is a mild breeze it is very slow it is not creating much by way of anything but i think there's a way we can check at how much it's creating aren't there goggles in create i think there's goggles in create where's 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 yeah there we go engineers goggles we're gonna want some of these all we need is some string i can make that happen uh hey you What do we got? Some string? No, not a lead. String. And a couple glass. We have glass on us. Give me a piece of gold for hammering. And back to create land. Yoink. So engineer's goggles are awesome. And I will tell you why. They let you... And is this a curio in this one? Uh, I guess we'll find out. Come on, Curio. Fit my Curio slot, would you? Boo, no Curio. Put them on your head, then. And, hey, goggles. Sweet. A pair of glasses to augment your vision with useful kinetic information. When worn, shows color indicators corresponding to the speed level of a placed kinetic component, as well as stress, impact, and capacity of individual components. When looking at gauge, shows detailed information. When looking at fluid containers. In other words, this makes it so when you look at create blocks, it gives you a bunch of information about them. So, for example, if I look at my kinetic generator here, we can see we're producing 192 stress units, which is basically the, the measure of energy, in this machine, right? And then when we look at uh, consumers, we can see it's using 192, and this one's using 384. Um, so we can see very clearly, you know, how much is being used and all that kind of good information. It's very, very useful. Um, now if I break this block, cool. All right, you know what else I wanna do? I wouldn't mind having the stressometer. Yeah, stressometer. That's what I want. In order to make that, we need a speedometer, which is a compass and a couple other things. So give me actually a couple, um, a couple of these guys. Stressometer. Uh, speedometers are also nice to have, by the way. They're not bad at all. Um, oh, did I have more redstone than that? I guess I did. I guess I did. It's all right. It ain't gonna hurt. Perfect. You know what? That's a nice number. And I'm going to turn two of you into stressometers. So speedometers and stressometers are kind of nice to see. So first off, let's take a look at the speedometer. This will tell you the rotational speed. So currently it's slow in at, you know, at this point. It's currently at 12 RPM, pretty slow. Okay? And if we put down the stressometer, we'll see how much stress is being put on our network based on how much we're producing versus how much we're using. So right here, it's telling us we're producing 1,152 stress units, which should be 192 times six, right? So we got six of these at 192 each, so we're pretty close to 1,200-ish, right? Um, and we're using 528 because we're using it here and we're using it there and we're using that guy over there. He's probably using some level of stress, I would imagine. Yeah, 48 stress units, not a lot. 
Now, remember, the faster things turn, the more stress they use, right? So, you know, this would be using less stress if it were at a slower speed. So these are important metrics because if you overwhelm the stress, you know, capacity of your network, the whole thing stops. It's not, it's not like it runs at a less efficient, it just stops working completely. So don't overdo your stress is the, you know, basic gist of what I'm trying to tell you here. Now, what are the chances? Woohoo, I got up there. Nice. That was kind of cool. I, I done did good. Um, so now what we want to do is we probably want to have, and I probably should have brought these up with me, but I'm not that smart. Um, but let's pop back down to create land and let's bring with us some shafts and some gearboxes so that we're ready to go. And I know I'm going to need a vertical gearbox when I get up there. Ah, perfect. <laughs> That's cool. All right. So here we're going to actually, I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I do, I, oh yeah, we well should be fine. I'm going to put my vertical gearbox like so, and that should be cool. Um, and then I'm going to make sure I've got a place where I can stick this shaft, right? Like so. I think, I think Quark can help me out here. One of the best features of Quark is being able to place blocks underneath where you're standing. So just hold right click and it'll build all the way to the ground. How cool is that? All right. Well, at least most of the way to the ground. I guess there's a little bit of a limit. And then we could have our gearbox, a vertical one again. Um, you know, we'll figure out, yeah, it should be fine. And if we need, if we need more gearboxing, we can make that happen, right? No, a vertical one, I said. Didn't I say a vertical one? Let's put it like that, so that, uh, yeah, that should look good. And if we wanted to measure our stressometer on this thing, we could do so with a measurement right here. And this would tell us the entire stress on the entire network. Now, currently, there's no stress and there's no rotation happening. So literally nothing is working because I didn't activate my windmill yet. I'm going to make this. Oh, and I died. Rip. It's all right. Loku came to visit me. How rude. Should we, should we let these guys know how rude that is? Because it's exceedingly rude. I'm trying to build over here and they decided to come visit? I don't think so, Chief. Get wrecked. Nice. All right, back to building with create. Remove that death point. I didn't die, I don't know what you're talking about. It's all about timing it. It works out. So now if I activate this guy, we can see we're producing 512 stress units with a very teeny tiny amount of windmilling. So the ideal amount is 128. So follow my logic here. If I have rows of three, okay, per side, and uh, you know what, actually, it might be, I might be wrong about my numbering here. Let's see, because I also want to do this, right? And this. So I might be wrong, actually, about my numbering. It might be that 128 we can actually fit perfectly. I forgot about the corners, but the corners might actually help me make out pretty good. Right? So if I did this... Stop doing that. All right, so we're gonna have eight in the middle, okay? And then it's gonna be 
3 times 9 would be 27 times 4. 27 times 4 plus 8 would be 116. So that doesn't actually work out. Um, let's see. Actually, I think that does work out. So if we have 10 rows of 3, right? So like this is a 3 by 10. So if we put, you know, 10 rows of 3 out here, that would be 30. And four sets of those would be 120 plus the 8 in the middle, right, would be 128. So it actually is perfect. So 128 is the exact amount you want, not what I said earlier. So as usual, and I think I've done this math before and then forgot. It's a very dire thing to do. So let's bump this out. So what we want is 10 blocks out, right? So currently we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now if we were to activate our windmill at this point, which I don't think I can get to, but you see what I mean. We're getting 3,072 stress units. Cool. Now here's, I thought you would be cool and like stop, you know, where I want you to. Oh, you reset your position? I thought you like, you know, rotated and stayed that way. That's how the other blocks work. Ooh. I was all ready to like, you know, use the same scaffolding, but I guess not. I guess not. All right. So now what we want to do, uh, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I know I have more windmill blocks because I definitely brought enough. Perfect. So that'll be one, two, three. Well, actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Looking good. All right, now we just need to go downwards, uh, which will be a little bit more of a challenge. Cool. All right, uh, so to get down is going to be slightly more of a problem. So I'm gonna just do this bit off camera, I think, because this will be slow and arduous. All right, I think we got it. Sweet. Now, if I'm not mistaken, when I activate this windmill, he should be at the max speed, which is 8192. 8192. Boom. And you know you did this if you get an achievement, right? Assemble a windmill of maximum strength. So that is what's up. Okay. Oh boy, that's a death. That's a death. <laughs> I jumped for it, and then I missed it. But that's okay, because I died on the ground this time. At least I don't have to pillar back up. At least. It's not a dire episode without a silly death. Okay, so you guys can get re-equipped now. That's like the one thing about the death mods is the curios don't get back in their slot. But, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, let's get our laser. Hooray! Look at that coolness, huh? So that guy is going to spin, and we can see our current stress, right? Low, 0%. We have 8192 available. We're using 0. Um, so now we can absolutely set up some cool stuff. So one of the most useful tools from Create is the crushing wheel. Now you'll notice it has a high kinetic stress impact. The crushing wheel is basically the ore 
processing mechanic from Create. Um, what it does is it lets you um, crush ores and get a bonus output. Uh, so we can take a look in a minute to see what that's going to look like. But basically you throw items into it and it'll spit out items underneath. Uh, you can also automate it with belts and hoppers and all kinds of other cool stuff. So it's a nice way, uh, and I definitely want to do some of this automation because this is a very fun process, right? So I'd like to maybe consider doing some kind of ore processing with this. Now if we look at the crushing wheel, I'm going to add that to my to-do list. Uh, you'll notice that if we crush things like, like, like raw iron, right? We're going to get crushed iron ore and a 75% chance to get a nugget of experience, which is kind of cool. Redeems experience points contained within. So you have to use it to get the experience out. That's kind of neat. Uh, now, is there any ore doubling with this or, or not really? Diamond ore has a chance to get us a little extra diamond. So it looks like if you have the raw ore, you have a 25% chance to, to, to get more. Um, but if you just have like, like the mined version, it's one to one when you crush it. But if you crush it, you can either smelt it directly into gold, which clearly doesn't have any kind of benefit to it, or um, you, can, you can blast it into ore, or you can wash it and you get gold nuggets and a 50% chance at nether quartz for gold. So basically, when you're washing resources with the water mechanic, which we'll, we'll probably be doing a bit of, you, you don't get more of the same resource like you do from some of the other mods, but you do get... A chance at something better right so if we looked at raw iron for example and we checked out what happens when we wash it so we would do this we would check this out and we wash it we'll get redstone at a 12 percent chance okay with copper and we crush it and wash it we have a chance to get clay that's kind of cool okay that's not bad what about like silver do you have a special washy bit no you just get nuggets for silver okay fair uh, is nickel, I'm assuming, the same way? So the mechanics are the same, you just don't get bonuses. All right, not bad, not bad. Well, that's interesting, you don't even have a crushing recipe for you. Ah. Poor osmium. So I think that's, you know, that could be cool. But there's other cool stuff we can get from crushing wheels as well. So I want to set up the crushing wheel today, and I think we've got some time. Actually, we may not have quite enough time to do the crushing wheel, but in order to make the crushing wheel, we're going to need mechanical crafting. We're going to need 21 of these guys. So let's talk about mechanical crafters real quick. Mechanical crafters can automate the crafting of items. Um, so basically, any crafting recipe that exists in the game, you can automate with mechanical crafters. Uh, you basically just have to align the crafters in such a way that they'll push the items together. And uh, all the pathways have to converge on one side. And then once you do so it'll go ahead and craft and output it uh, into an adjacent inventory, wherever you specify the output to be. Uh, they do require a rotational force to operate, and basically you put items in there and it will craft them however you want. So if you do something like this, you'll notice that it's gonna craft, um, and as long as it all comes together, zoinks, it makes an item, right? And this is how you use mechanical crafters, and you must use these to make the crushing wheel. There's no other way to make crushing wheels. So let's make some mechanical crafters real quick. Uh, I'm going to need 21 of them. So let's get seven sets of mechanical crafters. I'm going to come back. You've seen me craft things before. So let's, let's be right back. All right. So I think I've got close to what I need for my mechanical crafters. Uh, I'm just going to want some more wood because we're going to want seven of these. Does that math out? Yeah, buddy. 21. Perfect. Cool. So <clears throat> remember with the crushing wheel, and this is probably one of the biggest recipes that exists, you get two crushing wheels per craft. So that's cool. We need 21 of these in a three by five with three on the edges. So it's basically three by three with three all around. Okay. So I'm going to start this right here. Okay. And we're going to have this. Wrong number four. I'm very used to number four just being my miscellaneous, like, do thing slot. So I'm always, like, I'm always expecting, like, what I want there to be there. And that's never the case because I've always replaced it with something else. Cool. Now, what we want to do is orient these guys so that everything kind of... So what I'm going to do, if we rotate it, you can really kind of have it go wherever. So if I do that... And then you guys all come down and you guys go that way that 
should be pretty cool. And then you can go into... Uh, I was going to put a chest there, and then I'm like, right, you can't open chests if there's blocks on top. But I could put a barrel there, right? Ain't no reason not to. And that can be kind of like your output base, if you will. Sweet. All right. So uh, now what we might want to do is make sure that we're ready with some of these. And I probably want some tiny gears, and I might be out of them. So let's get some more of that. Perfect. So you want to connect to this, right? Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate you. The side you click on determines how it rotates, right? So if I were to say, you know what, now's maybe a, not a terrible time to get into belts. belts. Belts would be a good solution here. They really would be. I really like the idea of using a belt for this. And we haven't looked at belts at all yet, so I feel like now's a good time to look at belts. Okay, so let's get some belts. So home base, and we're going to need to set up a kelp farm. 100% we're going to need to set up a kelp farm. But if I want a belt, I need six dried kelp to get a belt. I guess that's enough. So let's just get like 12 dried kelp, and we need to set up a kelp farm. That's, that's going to need to be a priority for us. And I might do it with Create, because Create kelp farms are cool. Alright, so belts are awesome in that they can relay rotational force for you. So if I click here, you'll notice that my belt kind of has like a connecting point now. You can go horizontally or 45 degree angles or vertically. So basically straight up and down, straight left and right, or at a 45 degree angle. Those are your options. So um, if you had... Hey. Hey. Wrong thing. If you had, come on, dude. You just really don't want to be my friend today, do you? So if we have this belt, he can go here. He can't go here, but he can go there because that's a 45 degree angle, okay? Uh, and what's cool is the belt will connect to that that, that bracket and start spinning what's ever on there. So you can 100%, you know, manage a bunch of cool stuff that way. So what I'm going to do is that. And now we'll notice we're using quite a healthy amount of stress units, even at this low speed, right? 32 stress units per crafter. And we've got 21 crafters there. So ain't cheap. So a crushing wheel needs... Um, it looks like oak planks, some andesite in the middle, and a bunch of andesite alloys all around. So let's, you know what, I'm probably going to put you in here. And I can put the rest of this stuff away. And I know we're going to need more oak planks. And one andesite alloy, or andesite should be cool. And that should be good. And I'm just going to trash this iron nugget because it's just a nugget. So I think we do this, and then andesite alloy all around, is that right? Now if you fill up the crafting grid, I think it automatically starts crafting. And you'll notice everything kind of goes together. Oh, hang on. We want that to go that way. My bad. Cool. And this would craft faster with a faster rotational speed. So if we increase the speed of this, it would craft quicker. Hooray! Crushing wheels. Nice. A pair of giants. Now we're going to play with these next episode because it's wrapping up point. So for now, Double 20 signed off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Progressing into Create is always fun. Definitely in my opinion, one of the coolest mods out there. I played a whole pack that was entirely create-based, and I loved every minute of it. So uh, let's wrap up here. We'll come back next time. A kelp farm is going to be my to-do. 
right? Absolutely don't want to forget to do that. Maybe I'm going to put a little kelp away in case I accidentally use it and then be like, oh, no, I have to go find more kelp. Um, but, yeah, wrapping up point. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.